Mario Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. They don't talk about Bruno, but they sure do a lot of singing about Bruno, don't they? It's a loophole. You're not gonna talk about it, but you can sing about it or draw about it or... We don't talk about Bruno, so I'll sing. No. They say he saw the future when they disappeared. What happens? What happens to the person that is that black sheep of the family? The one that gets blamed for everything. It actually benefits the whole family except for that one person because no one really has to worry about taking the blame because they can constantly blame one person and they carry all of the ills, the hurts, the bad things that happen with the family, which leaves everyone else blameless and not responsible if something actually happens wrong. But after a while of hearing that you're always to blame, you'll probably start to believe it, even if there is no logical reason to carry that. We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno and then there's that but. Remember that statement that anything before the but doesn't really matter? Now we know that there's going to be a whole bunch of gossip that's gonna happen about this person that no one's supposed to talk or gossip about. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky Bruno walks in with a mischievous grin He ends up getting blamed for saying something that then makes Peppa so upset that then it creates a storm that he already forecast. That's what happens when we tell a story. They become so insidious. They get worse and worse as they continue to get told. But the worst part is that Bruno isn't even here to be able to defend himself. When we continue to tell bad stories about people, it maligns them. Like we think differently about them because of that. And it can be really damaging to family dynamics because it starts to create a little bit of an us and a them. We impart intentionality, which we don't know. Her power is not being psychic. With that statement, she's saying he intended to do this and to mean her harm and to ruin her wedding. He told me my fish would die the next day. Yeah. Oh. my hair would disappear, now look at my hair. After a while, when all of these stories start to carry over, this person that becomes that bad omen, that bad seed of the family, the one that carries all the blame and the hurt, we start to impart things that have nothing to do with them to that. Just because they say a statement or think something, they must be to blame. And it carries such a service because then you don't have to carry any responsibility for the fact that your fish died or that you gained weight or that you lost hair because it's this person's fault. And so we, get to be blameless because they're the sin eater in the family. It's very insidiously manipulative in a way that we create people that are the bad sheep of the family because anyone that hangs out with or talks to or befriends that person is also then tainted. <gasps> but how do we really know who someone is? The best way is when the chips are down, when all the poop has hit the fan and is flying everywhere. How are they under pressure? How are they when they have something to lose? And here we have Bruno, even though he doesn't want to be found out. He doesn't want people to know where he is. But when it comes to Mirabelle, perhaps dying, he comes back up to the plate and risks himself and his own life in order to save her. Why did you take the vision? What does it mean? So you can tell that he has a little bit of maybe OCD compulsions or maybe just superstitious behavior. Him knocking things, holding his breath, crossing his fingers. We do that when we're so worried about something bad happening. And for Bruno, he's been blamed for the ills of everything all the time. No matter what he says, people expect something bad to happen. And so you can see that stress has grown onto him and he's developed these rituals to try to control the uncontrollable. But the problem with these behaviors that one, we can't control the uncontrollable. So it ends up just being anxiety as we try. And two, those rituals and behaviors start to control us. A little salt. <laughs> and you see all of the other little superstitious behaviors that he's doing. He's trying to do everything. He's so worried that bad luck follows him. You can tell that he truly believes that bad things happen because of 
who he is as a person. All the patching's done by Hernando. Who is Hernando? I'm Hernando and I'm scared of nothing. It's actually me. I used to say my real gift was acting. <laughs> I love that. He's created this coping mechanism to be able to deal with things that he's scared of dealing with. And I think that that can be a really useful skill if of course, you know that this is a character that you're putting on, but sometimes we can create these archetypes within ourselves to be able to do things that we can't. And for Bruno, he's all alone. He is able then to do things that he couldn't because he creates these alternate personalities that have the skills that he doesn't have. The cool part is that he can integrate them fully into who he is as a person and feel like he's okay. In a way, what he's doing is that old adage of fake it until you make it. What do you what do you like? What do you like? You like sports? Game shows. Telenovelas. We're made to be part of a tribe. We're made to have other people around us. But for Bruno, he's not completely alone because companionship doesn't actually have to be other people. It can be one, yourself. It can be plants or stuffies. And for him, he has his rats that are wonderful company. And they're there to be able to give him companionship and love and be able to talk to if he happens to need to. This one is the most heartbreaking part of the movie for me with Bruno because even though he's not a part of the family that he ends up making his own little place so that he's still actually at the table with the other people that are in the family with him. There's so many people that go through that feeling of want to still be a part of something that they've been excluded from. It's just so very human. Is his coping mechanism okay? Is he dealing with denial? Is he dealing with reality? I think that that's a really hard question without asking Bruno himself. Does he feel okay with this? Is this something that causes him undue pain or not? It's something that I don't have a really good answer for. He chose to do this because being in the family, constantly feeling like he's causing everyone harm, hurt him would be going back to the family the way that it is right now just continue to harm him or could there be healing here it's a difficult question to be able to answer without being able to actually sit everyone down and talk to them to make sure that we don't continue to hurt the people that we love yeah my, my gift wasn't helping the family but i love my family i just don't know how to i just don't know how to when we're the ones that we feel like we're hurting the family or the family doesn't like us or we're being rejected or we're being blamed for everything, you can understand why someone would withdraw or leave or be able to have a different life. It's just so much pain to be able to carry all the time. And how do you cope with constantly feeling hurt, maligned, gossiped about, and rejected. Everyone wants to feel loved and validated and accepted and heard and that we're good enough and we bring something to the table. We have an offering. We want to be a part of the tribe, but not just a part, a contributing member. And for type A personalities, that's really indicative of where their self-esteem is, where their value, their identity as a human, as a person really falls. I just wanted to make the family proud of me. If I'm hurting my family... I can't tell you because I don't know. His eyes light up. You can tell that for Bruno that is something that he understands. It's something that he also hopes for. And I believe that Bruno really sees a lot of himself reflected in Mirabelle because now she's the one that is continually to blame for the ills of the family. Just like he was. If I see something that you don't like, you're gonna be all, oh, Bruno makes bad things happen. Oh, he's creepy and his vision killed my goldfish. Do you see, do you see the kind of pressure that Bruno has? When you're constantly the one to blame, you become tentative about being able to say anything, do anything, because you're constantly thinking you're walking on eggshells, that the next time you step may be the time where people are gonna blow up at you. It stops you from feeling like you can actually share what you wanna share or change things because you're already expecting someone to blow up or get angry at you. And it's so painful that you become raw to everything that's around you. And that can make you want to withdraw or stay quiet when you should speak up or not become a part of something or not ask to have something changed. In a way, that ends up stealing your voice and dimming your light. Bruno helping Mirabelle is a huge risk 
to himself emotionally. Sometimes family weirdos just get a bad rap. You can do this. The people that stick out, that are different, that don't conform, sometimes they're the ones that carry everything even though they're not actually the ones that should be to blame. And for Mirabelle, she really understands this because when Bruno left, she was the one that took on this part in the family because she was the one that didn't have a gift. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I love one that he gets a stuffy. I love stuffies. I think that whatever you have to be able to soothe yourself, totally own that. But I also love Bruno outwardly saying that positive self-talk to be able to let himself know that this is going to be okay. He can do this even at so much risk. And you see him taking that deep breath to try to slow down that shallow breathing to be able to oxygenate, which lowers your level of stress. I don't know if you heard, I ruined her proposal. Plus, P.S. Yeah, is just a... And do you hear how tentative he is in giving this most brilliant, beautiful, powerful advice? The fate of the family, it, it's not up to her. It's up to you. You're exactly what this family needs. She has this power. She can do this to help her believe in herself. But he's tentative and his voice is soft. And when he raises his voice, coming out of a bed. Oh, sorry. He's so scared about being too much, about being seen in a certain light that he has gotten rid of who he is as a person. He's soft-spoken. He's tentative. And you can already tell that that's not really who Bruno is. After I saved the miracle, I'm bringing you home. Knock, 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 knock on wood. I love that. I love her saying that, that she's going to bring him back to the family. A thing that he wants so badly that he goes back through his ritual of having to knock on everything because he doesn't want that possibility to be ruined because it would mean so much to him to be able to be rejoined with the family that he loves so much. Oh, oh, she didn't do this! I gave her a vision! I love it, Bruno's such a hero. Here he comes, he's worried again that Mirabelle's gonna be blamed, and so right away, he ends up swooping in and being able to try to take all of the shrapnel from this, saying it was him and it was no one else. This really shows how much he wants to protect someone else from having to go through what he went through, that he'll carry all of it to be able to save her. It was me! I was like, go! She only wanted to help. I don't care what you think of me. And did you hear that pain, that hurt, that anger, that, that gruffness that came into his voice that it doesn't matter what you think about me. But the only thing is that there was so much hurt there. If he really didn't care, if it really didn't matter, there wouldn't have been as much emotion that would have come into those words for the pain that he's carried for all of these years. But if you're too stubborn to, to, to just... Bernito. And I know everyone's really upset that Abuela didn't give him a proper, really dignified apology, but you're right, he, she didn't. But that beautiful hug that she gave and the kiss and that embrace and her holding his hand and bringing him with her and pulling him onto the horse, not all families are verbal and, and it's not fair and it's not right and we should all have all of those tools, but I think that for Abuela that was a really big deal. I think that there's a lot of people in families that are not verbal communicators and don't say sorry, that they would love to have that really meaningful hug and that embrace and to be able to ta be taken by the hand and brought back and said, especially because she is the matriarch, so her bringing him back, everyone else is going to accept it because she did. And I think that it does go especially for Bruno, to a lot of healing. And when I ask people about apologies and how they feel about it, maybe we don't feel like it was enough, but you could tell that for Bruno, it was monumental and he felt healed from it. And so sometimes we need to put aside how it might not have been good enough for what we would have expected. It definitely went a long way, perhaps not all the way, but a long way for healing for Bruno. The miracle is not so magic that you've got. The miracle is you, not some gift, just you. <laughs> and so I love when, um, because Abuela brings him back, right? And because she's the matriarch, everyone else reacts. And that look of that excitement of like, oh my God, he's here. 
we have him, our brother is home. Um, and because she did it, everyone else right away knew that they could rush to accept. Damn it. And I love the embrace of him being brought back to the family. And so even though it wasn't Mirabelle where you're like, maybe it should have been, I think that it really meant a lot that it was actually Abuela that first introduced him back and saying that it isn't about your gift. It's about who you are. Sorry about your wedding, didn't need to be upset and got a lot of apologies I got to say. Hey, um, we're just happy that you're here, okay? But come into the light. The and do you hear how much guilt he still carries about something that he didn't intentionally try to hurt anyone and yet he's the one that's still apologizing. So he still carries that it's his fault. Really, they've been talking bad about him and their hurt and their angst for so long. I think that there's a lot of apologies that need to go around and most of them are not actually from Bruno that need to be said. And I love that his sister says, you know what, it doesn't matter. We're just so happy that you're here. You know, just come into the light. Let us see you. And I think that that's wonderful when someone comes in and says, I'm so sorry in this. And they're like, you know what? I don't care. I just want you back. And so I think that she did a really nice job of letting him know that, you know what? It, whatever is the past is the past and we'll work it out. We carry this guilt because we feel like we've done something that's damaged someone else. And someone else is like, they're done it. They don't care. It's over. We often don't talk about it because we're so worried about what the repercussions can be. And for many people that those words of that, it's okay, I've moved on. I just want us to be able to work on us can do a lot of healing. I love how all these characters have their own unique creativity and style. You can find yours as well with Find Your Style, five exercises to unlock your creative identity on today's sponsor, Skillshare. This is a really fun and inspiring class. You follow Andy J. Pisa, who lays out five hands-on exercises to help you unlock your artistic identity. Working in the medium of your choice, you'll explore who you are and what you have to say, and then put it all together in your own personal style guide. And I hope that you have fun doing it, because I really did. But Skillshare has so much more than any one class. It's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn. Whether you want to explore your creativity or invest in yourself or your own personal growth or just kick off 2022 with something new. From video to photography to illustration and design, business, freelancing, and so much more, you can find a Skillshare class that'll match your goals. Or maybe even fuel the new you, or even a new career or hobby. It's wherever I go, anytime I wanna learn anything. Cause it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads. There are always new, different premium classes available so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity so takes you. Because you're watching this video, the first thousand of you that click the link in the description will get one month trial of Skillshare for free. So just click on that button in the screen and start exploring your creativity today. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Yes, we definitely talked about Bruno, did not sing, I did threaten it, but I didn't do it. If you like this video and more Encanto, Arcane, or you let me know what video I should react to next. And thank you so much to all the people that support me on Patreon and subscribe to this channel.